acanthus leaf. You want to start just sort of a general shape, okay, just a basic leaf shape. And this is, I'm just going to do a straight, simple acanthus leaf. And then you've got your vein line coming down. Okay, now in, uh, the, this is where you want to take in each of these, that's, I'm just going to divide this up into three different lobes, all right? Then what you do is you take this and you divide it into, I'll just work on this one side since uh, Okay, Se separate it into three different lobes, and then right at the end of that, that's where you have what's called an eye. Okay, and if you continue that line and imagine it to come underneath that leaf and then continue on, that's basically what the eye is, or how the eye is created. It's basically the sort of, it looks like there's a, it's actually a hole. Oh, okay. Okay. It's just a little. Yeah, where, where they overlap and it just, it creates this little hole. Okay, the same thing here, that comes down there, creates a little eye, and then if you imagine that to go under that leaf, and then come up the other side, and then that's going to continue that. Okay, so that's pretty much, um, I mean, that is as basic as it gets, and then it goes on from there. <laughs> um, now, wh another thing that is very common in acanthus leaves is what's called a pipe. And usually that is a raised area right next to or right behind that eye. Okay, and so underneath each one, from there to there. So when you're carving it, this is actually a raised area and then it's very low there. So if you're looking at it from the side, it kind of looks like that. Okay, and uh, this you can pretty much see in most examples. Um, you've got this raised area, and um, and this again is sort of that hollowed or, uh, hole, basically. And um, and then beyond that, then you can start to divide up the different lobes. You can do as many as you want, and you can you know come in and so so you're separating and, and doing the details of that that point. And it's amazing, once you understand sort of the principles of how these are drawn, um, that's where, if I've got sort of these unknowns that aren't quite showing up on the photograph, I can fill it in and say, okay, well, that's how an acanthus leaf is shaped, or that's how it should all flow down to that vein or, or something like that. You know, you, you can, if you, if you spend some time drawing it and understanding it and observing it, then you can take a, a really bad photograph and figure it out. So um, it does it does help to to know that. Okay, so um, then what you want to do is then a vein line coming down there, but every time you have any line at all, they all flow down into that center vein. Okay? And so, and uh, quite often with acanthus leaves on furniture, it's very, very flat, and the only lines really that show any definition, or the only parts that show any definition, are just a slight overlapping there that will show that three dimension there, an overlapping there, and then these lines will show the shape. It's generally pretty flat. When you've got those leaves on a, on a cabriol leg, not much shape at all, probably, you know, sometimes just a sixteenth of an inch deep, but you've got those lines that flow, and those, and that eye, and that pipe, okay, so just to give you that, um, that move, and so it's, there's a lot more illusion than actual carving on that. Every single line here, every single line that I've drawn, whether it's this one, whether it's that one, any one of these, it's all really? going to be flowing in. Even... I don't know if you can see that. Even these lines that I've drawn are going to eventually flow into that center vein. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if those start going in some other direction, it's going to look odd. So every single line that you've drawn will eventually flow in, and that's where it keeps it that flowing consistency. Oh. Same thing there, and then you've got the eye... Coming up there. So yes, similar, 
similar to that. Okay. Um, now I wanted to show you something. So here we've got this, you know, pretty basic thing, basic um, even design. I just want to move this from here. Okay. Now, if you wanted to get a little bit more fancy and actually put sort of a bend in it and make the sort of leaf flip over, this is where you take the same principles that I showed you, and I'm going to do the outside. Well. Ooh, that's kind of exaggerated, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, okay, so let, let's just say that right there is the center vein. Okay, and I'm going to base the leaf around it. Okay, so there's that side. This is really exaggerated. Okay, and then it's going to come like that, and then that's going to actually flow or sort of flip over. Okay. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay, same principle though, but all of these lines flow down to that center vein. All right, if, if you imagine that to continue, it'll flow down. Same thing there, and then same thing there. All right, and then this is where you've got that sort of flipping over there. And then you can actually have a sort of that center vein do something like that. Okay, and then little, you can, oh, let's see if we can actually do that. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Let's see if, if you sort of have that vein. Anyway, similar sort of notches as it goes up the leaf. Okay, so as we come here, you want to make that eye right there, and then imagine it going underneath, and then continuing there. Same thing here. And imagine it going underneath, and then finishing up there. And then the same thing there. And then, okay, so um, similar principle, then all of these will have, it'll have the pipe coming down, all flowing in, all flowing in to that center vein. And then this, I'm not quite sure what to do with this one, but let's just see. We can just make a little, make this a little notch. This is actually a little bit large of a flip over because it wouldn't naturally be that long. It, what it does is it tends to make the leaf look very long and sort of thin at the very end. It would probably be more realistic to to have this sort of bending over and actually kind of ending. So, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll play with, with that. But that's basically how you sort of get a little bit more dimension to it. And um, but the same same principle. Then you can come in here and divide each one of these up. And the more you, you do this, the more you get comfortable with the flow of it. And so when you start carving something like this, you, you can figure out, okay, well that's overlapping that, and that's, that's a natural position of where that eye should be. You know, it's a good idea just to play around with it. And if you ever go to um, antique stores or anything like that, and you can go into and just look at some of the leaves, whether it's on you know, any kind of cabinets or anything, there's, it's so common to see this leaf and just look at it and study it. You can photograph it and, and draw it. And it just, it helps a lot in understanding because so often the, um, the acanthus leaves that you carve, as I said, they're very shallow. So what it ends up being is actually uh, drawing with a V chisel. So if you can, you know, get the, get the knack of that V chisel thing, you can, <laughs> and if you can draw an acanthus leaf, um, uh, you can do a lot of that, uh, the knee carving and that type of thing, so. Mm -hmm.